Yeah, you know how high school uh, students usually want some space? Well, they actually love space here at Canby Secondary. Coming up later this morning, they are going to be having a conversation with the International Space Station. So they're getting ready right now. We're going to find out a little bit about how the opportunity came to be that they would speak with Koichi Wakata, commander of the International Space Station, later this morning. Stay with us. And it is so cool that we can connect, but the thing is, is not most of us don't actually get a chance to connect as directly as the students here at Canby Secondary. First of all, congratulations. This is a really big day, Erica. It's huge. This is a monumental day for our school today. We're pretty excited about this once in a lifetime opportunity for Canby Secondary. And of course, the conversation we're having is that you actually get to have a conversation with Koichi Wakata, commander of the International Space Station. How did this come to be? Well, one of our amazing teachers here at Canby, Karen Ibbett, applied and we got picked and today's the day that we'll be talking to Koichi Preparing on the ISS the as they travel 430 sense. kilometers above our school. And so what's happened is you're going to spend probably probably less than 10 minutes chatting with them so you've had to compile a ton of questions and uh, a select few students will actually get to ask some of the questions and we've got Nika here. You're actually going to get a chance to ask some questions, right? Actually I'm the first one to, <laughs> to make contact with Do you with know them. your question yet that you're going to ask? Oh, I'm not asking a question. Oh, <laughs> there you go. But you get yeah. to have So how excited are you for this experience? I'm so excited. This is such a special opportunity. I'm so honored to be able to be the first one. Wonderful. Now, of course, part of this presentation is there is going to be a video. We've got Janice and we've got Richard. Tell us a bit about this video that's going to be uh, played later on this morning. So it's teaching about the International Space Station and it's teaching about um, how there's a, a lot of kids from Canby that were in, included in the video and we were running around and we got them to sh be in it. Too. What did you get to do, Richard? I actually uh, helped to edit the video and we got a lot of different clips of astronauts who are actually have been in space and answered some of the questions that a lot of kids had. Wow, this is super exciting. Now, when actually is the conversation happening with the International Space it, Station? It's actually happening at 9.56 this morning. So mm -hmm. cross our fingers, it all happens as planned. Uh, nothing technical ever happens. It's wrong. It always works out and we're going to be catching all the excitement as they prepare for the big conversation, Jody, with the International Space Station here at Canby Secondary. Oh yeah, including taking a selfie from space. Yes, they are getting ready for a very important conversation with the International Space Station this morning. So they're preparing for it, including their version of the Canada Arm. We meet a couple of members of the robotic team coming up next on BT. Stay with us. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's going to be a big conversation here happening with the commander of the International Space Station. And part of the Canby Secondary School is you've had all these sort of competitions, question competitions, mission patch uh, competitions. Rokan, tell us a little bit about what you designed. Um, I actually won because there was a contest that was like you have to design a, like the logo itself. And my design was picked. And uh, like this inspiration just came from uh, my original design that I made, which was like the Enzo circle, which meaning that there's a dragon is eating the other end. So it means it like represents sustainability and like how our earth is sustaining on its own resources and how like we are able to go to space and do all that stuff. And it's amazing to me. Very cool. I understand you want to be a graphic designer when you grow yeah. up too. Awesome. Well, you're on a right start. Let's uh, make our way to the robotic arm. Of course, the Canada arm. And we've got members of the robotic team here, Colin and Jordan. Tell us a little bit about what you have going here. Uh, this is our model of Canada arm. And uh, we basically work on this for the last couple of weeks. And uh, yeah. And so it's super cool. Tell us a little bit about how you operate it here, uh, Colin. Uh, we have two uh, joysticks here. And one of them, the one I'm holding, uh, it has a key in the back. And Show the back there, yeah. Yes. And so um, what it does is the key essentially is letting the, uh, the controller uh, find the brain of the robot. That is super cool. And it took you about four weeks to make. We should point out that it wasn't just the two of you uh, that made it here. This was a whole team effort. And you're award winning here as well, right? Yeah. We, uh, the, the solar panels, which the things that are supposed to look like solar panels there, are the awards. Excellent. Well, they're doing great work here again at Canby Secondary, where, uh, Michelle, they are going to be getting ready to speak with Koichi Wakata, the commander of the International Space Station, just before 10 o'clock. Uh, for more details, of course, on what they're doing, you'll want to stay tuned here on Breakfast Television. You guys can stop it there. We can get a nice close-up look there for Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> One thing, though, that they are obsessed with here, and rightfully so at Canby Secondary, is the fact that they get to actually speak with the commander at the S International Space Station later on the morning. So how are they technically making it happen? We're going to find out coming up next on BT. Stay with us. 
Oh, absolutely. They are so excited here at Canby Secondary where they are communicating with the International Space Station just before 10 o'clock. But how does it happen all technically? So Yuri with the Richmond Amateur Radio Club, tell us a little bit about how this all works and how they're going to be making contact with space today. Okay, well, these two items here are the uh, stars of the show. Uh, primarily, um, the antenna you see that is moving right now, that's, that's our primary antenna that's going to be making a contact, while the second one, which is also called egg beater because it looks like one, is our secondary. Now, how it works is that the, space, uh, the space station uh, at roughly 10 o'clock will be appearing on the northwest horizon, and it will go arc over the sky and go back down to disappear into the horizon on the east side. And the time span is roughly seven minutes. And during that time, what will happen is that what will happen, what will happen mm -hmm. is that data from the, uh, uh, the the location of the space station will be fed into a computer, which will be uploaded into a rotator mechanism, which is the mechanical part that the, the bulb uh, sitting at the bottom of the antenna there, and that is what drives the antenna to move to track the ISS. Now, once the tracking is locked in that's when communication can begin. And so what happens is that when, um, the tracking process begins roughly two or three degrees below the horizon, which is roughly about a minute or so before contact, to enable the antennas to start moving to keep in sync with the movement of the ISS. And once that's accomplished then, that's when radio transmission can begin. Just like that. That's how it's all happening here at Canby Secondary. It's all a lot of, a lot of pressure on these guys' shoulders because the uh, kids are super excited. Ten questions uh, back at the station have been sort of selected out of hundreds of questions to be asking uh, the commander of the International Space Station. So uh, we're going to continue to give you a little more behind the scenes of what they're doing to prepare for this big moment this morning here in Richmond. And the person that really started this all up, Karen, tell us a little bit about how this all came to be. Well, I first learned about the AERIS program about five years ago, but it was about 15 years ago that I finally took the initiative and put together a proposal. And we found out last September that our application was accepted. And uh, we all th at that point, we only knew it was going to be March. A month ago, we found out which week. Last week, we found out which day. So it, it came together beautifully. It surpassed my expectations as to how how wonderful it's going to be today. And I'm really looking forward to just sitting back, relax, and watching the, the show unfold. Exactly, and all the students obviously have done a lot of preparation for this day. We saw, you know, what the robotics team have put together, and you are in mere moments going to be doing the media briefing. Yes, and seeing, seeing the excitement of the students just the last few weeks mounting as we cut closer to our date has really made this worthwhile to me. I put a lot of time into it and it was every minute was worth it. Wonderful. Well, I know you're busy. The media is standing by getting ready to uh, get briefed on what's going to happen just before 10 o'clock. I'll let you get busy over there. Thank We're going to chat with uh, the students here a little bit more coming up just before 9 o'clock, Jody, to find out again about this exciting day that they have here in Richmond. Thanks very much, uh, Jody. We're here in Richmond at Canby Secondary where the excitement is building as they get ready to speak with the commander at the International Space Station. Coming up next, what kinds of questions will they ask? We'll hear from a couple of the students. Stay with us. You're watching BT Live from Richmond. Oh, you can definitely feel the buzz here at Canby Secondary where all the students are just making their way in. And Erica, what an exciting morning. We've been here all morning long, sort of getting a bit of a preview of what's happening. What are we physically going to have happen here within the hour here? Well, uh, we're going to start off the show teaching kids a little bit about what the ISS is and uh, space exploration and research that's happening. At 9.56, we're going to initiate contact with Koichi Wakata. And at that point, we will be able to start asking questions. Now, Koichi will be on an audio feed with us, so we'll hear him answering our questions. Excellent. And of course, we've got Richmond Amateur Radio Club, who obviously is facilitating the big call. When that call gets made, man, everyone's just going to be like, <gasps> I know, you it's know? going to be so exciting and unfortunately everyone in the live site here needs to be really quiet when that happens. However, our webcast and uh, our simulcast sites, we hope that they're cheering loud for us. Excellent. Now obviously several questions, perhaps even hundreds of questions were coming up but you had to narrow it down. We did. We received 150 questions and we had to narrow it down to the top 20 and the top 10 students are asking their questions today. Excellent. Well, let's thank you very much. Let's make our way to a couple of the students who together you are going to be able to ask a question. Uh, Javon, tell us a little bit about the question you're going to ask. Yeah, so we were going to ask Commander Koichi Wakata, does the amount of sound he is exposed to on the ISS affect him psychologically? Ooh, good question. And maybe, uh, Jelly, you can tell us why you wanted to ask that question. Well, as our science class began to discuss how the astronauts' profession can affect their health, 
Jiven and I just began to wonder whether the sound that the machinery kind of emits affects them at all, like changes their state of mind. Wow, what excellent questions. Jody. I don't recall ever being this smart when I was in high school, but they are definitely excited here at Canby Secondary School, where less than an hour to the big call to the commander of the International Space Station. What an exciting morning here this morning in Richmond.